Simple Schultz. Bant Company versus Black White Angel Control. And I think play draw is going to be very pitiful in this matchup. Ethan being on the play and being able to win does not surprise me whatsoever. I think there's a very good chance that Evan is able to take this game. But then when we go back to game three, Ethan will be able to be on the play and uh, will likely take the match. So I expect a, a good three games here, or two more, I should say. I think that Ethan's going to take it when he has the initiative. I suppose the tempo is pretty important. The tempo is very important when you're playing ca with cards like uh, Thalia and Reflector Mage. And uh, I'm actually curious to see if Ethan has Reflector Mage in his list. Let's see here. It looks like, yes, we do have Reflector Mage in Ethan's oh, list. Excuse me, Thalia. Which he does. He also has Thalia. He has three Thalia, so fully committed. Probably can't play four Thalia in this uh, deck. This looks like Evan is going to be mulliganing down to six. And, and cards like Spell Queller and Thalia in particular, uh, Reflector Mage also. But those three drops, they just make it so that being on the player, being on the draw is just so polarizing. Uh, specifically, though, th they work exceptionally well against other creatures, which is predominantly what this format is. It's about creatures. Uh, Evan having a bunch of removal, though, is going to have a little bit more game playing against them. All right, well, Evan is going to keep his six and scry the card to the bottom. He's going to start off with a shambling vent. Ethan is just going to play a canopy vista and pass the turn back. And that island was actually a great draw for Ethan. I don't think he had blue mana until that draw step. Oh, and, Ethan, and Evan is missing his third <laughs> land drop. So Ethan could very easily run away with this game, but he does not have a creature. Yeah, Ethan's hand is a little reactive. He's got Spell Queller and Negate and Avicen and a bunch of land drops. Considering that Evan isn't doing anything, I actually would like to see Ethan simply play lands and not do anything. Uh, if he just continues to make land drops, he's likely to be able to plan out one big turn where he can cast multiple spells in one turn and Evan won't be able to deal with them all. Uh, in addition to that, he might cause Evan to get in a position where he needs to start discarding hand, uh, cards from his hand because he can't play them and he has too many. Uh, whereas if he does things like this, uh, Evan will slowly be able to just one for one things as they trickle out. All right, well, Ethan is going to play a Sylvan Advocate and a fourth land and pass back. Uh, Evan Buschholz will use an ultimate price on Ethan's end step to take care of that Sylvan Advocate. He missed his third land for a turn, but now, while Ethan has five lands, Evan is back on three. Let's see if he can cobble something together. Yeah, and if um, Ethan had not played the Sylvan Advocate on the previous turn and just uh, passed, he, on this turn, he would be able to play Sylvan Advocate and have Spell Queller as backup. And then if he was able to untap from there, he could potentially have access to not only Avicen, but the Negate, which would be uh, quite backbreaking. Well, Ethan is just going to play his sixth land and pass the turn back to Evan. Let's see if Evan found a fourth land. He did not. We do have a Read the Bones, though. This seems like a real juicy Spell Queller target. Well, yes and no. It's, uh, I believe it'll mean that Evan is going to have to discard to hand size, even if he finds a land that he can play. So while it helps him find a land, uh, I think I'd prefer to just flash in the Avacyn, because it's the bigger body, the bigger clock, and you can save uh, your Spell Queller for something that actually impacts the board. All right, well, he is just going to keep, keep the two on top, draw them both as their lands, play a Forsaken Sanctuary, and discard a Gisela to hand size. Ethan's going to play an Avacyn on Eva Evan's end step, start off his turn with an attack from that Archangel Avacyn, play a Lemurine Falls, and pass the turn back. And now between Spell Queller and Negate, this game is practically over. So we'll see what uh, Evan can do. It's going to be a tough one. All right, Evan does have his fifth land. He has a full grip of cards. Let's see if he can cobble together some number of removal spells to handle the board. Ruinous Path is going to be the starter. And I would really like to see a Spell Queller on this. Uh, Ethan will still have the Negate, and it adds more power and toughness onto his board, so he can put Evan on a very tight clock. I think Evan might also have a second copy of Archangel Avacyn, which is pretty nice. Yeah. 
Negate is going to counter the Ruinous Path. I don't like using the gate here as much because, uh, you know, something like Planar Outburst or uh, Tragic Arrogance or Obnixilis is something that Evan may have to, or excuse me, Ethan may have to worry about. All right, let's go ahead and see if Evan happens to have any of those on his list. It looks like we have some Flame Tendrils, but I don't see any Planar Outburst. Oh, it looks like he does have one on the sideboard. Yeah. All right. Ojitai's command is going to get back Sylvan Advocate and draw a card on Evan's end step. And an ultimate price is going to take care of the Sylvan Advocate. And Evan's going after the Sylvan Advocate because he's worried about that Lumbering Falls attacking for five. Uh, but this, uh, this Avacyn is going to be proved to be quite the problem as well. Uh, Ethan could attack here with the Lumbering Falls and the Avacyn, knocking Evan to two. Looks like that might be what he's going to do. He is going to activate that Lumbering Falls, attack Abyssin down to two, or attack Evan down to two. And Ethan still has the mana for the Spell Queller. So even if things go wrong, depending on how badly they go wrong, Ethan may still have a lethal attacker. There is still this Lumbering Falls also. Evan has an anguished on making his hand that he actually can't cast. Yeah. Just going to pass the turn. And I think if, if I was Ethan, I would just fire off the uh, Spell Queller. Just to have another lethal attacker. It's almost the same casting it or not casting it, but if you cast it, you may just draw something else and you can just overload your opponent's mana. Make it so that you're casting too many things for him to actually handle. And Ethan is going to fire off that Spell Queller on Evan's end step. <laughs> and now Eth all Ethan needs to do is probably fire up the Lumbering Falls, attack with everything, and that's going to be game. And he draws another Spell Queller, so really getting paid off for uh, casting this Spell Queller. And now Ethan swings in, even a Evan after having some mana problems, is not going to be able to handle the assault, and Ethan Phelps takes it. Well, Ethan Phelps is going to take this match two games to zero over Evan Bushholtz. Bant Company is going to move on to our semifinals. Congratulations, Ethan. Evan, unfortunately, that game did not look very nice. He mulliganed, he scried, kept it on the top, and just didn't play lands for a few turns. Yeah, being in a top eight and uh, mulliganing when you're already down a game never feels good. Um, I think that the Black-White Angel control deck, it has a lot of good things going with it, but one of the things that is a little unfortunate about it is it's a, a deck that has a pretty high curve, and it does not operate particularly well on a low n land count. Um, so frequently in this you know standard format, we see this over and over and over again, where the easiest way to lose is to just miss your land drops. 